it's widely accepted that science is telling us that if we're going to maintain the rise in global temperatures, if we're going to maintain those within the two degrees that we believe might allow the planet the ability to continue to exist uh, and to continue to operate in the way it does today, we have to significantly reduce emissions of greenhouse gases globally by up to 80% uh, by 2050 from the 1990 levels. That's what the science is telling us. And what that means for Europe, what it means for Ireland, is we effectively have to completely transform the way that we generate and consume energy. And the focus is really on decarbonising our power system. And Ireland has a number of different options that it may use ultimately to decarbonise the power system. Biomass, hydro, uh, perhaps even in time wave, wave and tidal. Solar will certainly come into the mix. But at the moment, predominantly low cost option that Ireland has is in development of onshore wind farms. And the sort of scale of farm that you see here is certainly contributing very, very significantly to the emissions reduction um, on the Irish power system and is contributing to the decarbonisation of the economy. It is that transition and the need to transition to a low carbon economy that's driving these types of developments and will continue to do so in the coming decades. And this site here would have been very, very important from the point of view of provision of energy for the state for over 50 years. In that peat production from this particular location would have serviced the local briquette factory in Crohan, which is just to the north of the site, and would also have fed three or four of the Midlands peat-fired power stations which came into being in the mid-60s and ultimately retired in the, in the, in the late 90s. So for up on 50 years, this site was providing energy to the state. We're moving into an era where the site itself can remain a very, very important site from the point of view of energy production for the state, perhaps for decades to come. Um, and hopefully in a way that we believe now to be very, very sustainable from the point of view of environmental protection. The option of doing nothing just doesn't seem to make any commercial sense. Throughout the last uh, two and a half years over the construction phase, there was a, a very good team spirit built up on the wind farm. In terms of the overall timeline, uh, work started on the site in about February 2012. We would have established pretty much the entire footprint of the road network on the site. During 2013, the main activity was uh, completion of the foundations for the turbines. and also the completion of the construction of the substation. The next main challenge was, was getting the, the turbine components to sites themselves. There's four sections of tower which range between 20 and 35 metres in length. Turbine components themselves come into Dublin Port, so on the route from Dublin Port to the site, certain alterations to the local road network were, were required. In 2014, main focus was on the construction of the turbines themselves and doing the final connection of the turbines back to the substation. The 100 metre hub height gives this site the advantage of extracting more energy from the wind. Each turbine generates at three megawatts at max capacity. The wind farm here will generate enough electricity for approximately 45,000 homes.